from the outside, yeah. the huge success you're having looks yeah. A, like it's happened extraordinarily quickly and yeah. B, almost like it's happened by accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that how it, you see it? Um, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely happened for us. Um, definitely overwhelmed. Um, but whether, um, yeah, I do feel like it, not accident, but it's just all a bit like, wow, 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 wow. After every single stage, or it just seems like everything I just happen to be doing at the moment, everybody's kind of happy with. So I'm kind of happy. But too. that happened very quickly. Yeah, very quick. Like literally, fine wine come out. And that was like the first massive reaction I had. Like that got, I think it's on currently on like 10 million views on um, YouTube and it's gone silver as well. So it sold over 200,000 copies. The next one was Shape of You. And then that was when, that's the first stage I actually thought, okay, cool, you can actually do this because that reaction, I think it's the most viewed video over all UK platforms. So like the SBTV's link up and then Ed made it official as well. And How was that? That was, because I think I met him once at the event. Before it come out, um, he actually approved it because um, my manager, G Fresh, is pretty close with him. They know each other. And then after um, I met him at an event and he told me I'd heard it, blah, blah, blah. And then after I was like, okay, cool. Then a couple of weeks down the line, it's been made an official remix. Were you a bit nervous about whether he'd like it or not? Or yeah. did you just think, I don't care? Um, no, I obviously cared. <laughs> he doesn't care what Ed thinks. No, I definitely did care. I definitely did care. I remember recording it. And then when I did send it to G, he sent it off to Ed. And then Ed was like, okay, cool. And Jamal as well was like, yeah. Ed likes it, so I was like, okay. Oh, I mean, the way the story goes about that, this yeah. idea that, you know, G Fresh says, yeah. just come in and do it, do yeah. it. It'll, you yeah. know, it'll be fun, it'll yeah. be good. Exactly. That sort of sounds a bit like, well, we're not really taking this seriously. It doesn't sound very, <laughs> doesn't sound very thought through. Yeah. Is that right? Or did you actually have a plan, um, do you think? With the, at, that, at that stage, I think we was just kind of still having fun at that stage. Uh, that was still early stages. And um, that was still the stages where it's just fun. I think now it's more like it's definitely still having fun with it and definitely um, still enjoying the ride and doing whatever feels right. But it's just that now it's like you know that you've come further and that it's a career now. So you just have to think twice before you do anything. Because when you were growing up, did you yeah. think music would be the career? No. When I was growing up, I've always had an interest in music. Like my parents always played music. And growing up, it was like, um, my parents used to listen to like gospel and R&B, et cetera. As I got older, I started listening to my own kind of thing and grew my own interest. But I never actually thought I'd be a musician. It was just always like a natural, natural, I think, this is funny because we was having a conversation and someone asked me, what is your hobby? I was like, I don't have one. But I think music is my hobby. I think it's always been. And now I've just turned it into a career. But every parent's nightmare. Yeah. You gave up piano lessons. Yeah, I gave up piano. And I gave up piano lessons when I was young. I gave up at like 12, 13. 12, 13 years old. I did it for a couple of years. My, parent, my, my old man, my dad put me into um, piano lessons. And then um, I grew up, but I think that was mainly because um, I started listening to different genres of music where obviously the piano wasn't as present or was less present. So I remember when I was like 14, my favourite artist very quickly became 50 Cent as soon as he came out. And that was the first album I ever bought. So obviously there's not, the piano is not present much in, in hip hop or rap in, well, at that time. Rihanna yeah. is a song that you said was about powerful, strong women. Yeah. Why did you feel that that was an important Thing to talk about. Um, primarily, obviously, I, it was inspired by one girl who is like you described, and then it would became after that. It also became an opportunity to kind of spread the message, which was what I was trying to achieve initially. It was just me writing about a woman who is exactly like that, who is strong, who is independent, who has no fears, and who isn't scared of taking any risks. But then throughout life, you grow up and you realise that there's many of them. There's a lot of women like that. And then that was just, for me, an opportunity to just spread that message. Why did you feel that was a message that needed to be spread? I feel like as an artist and, and an, influ an, an influencer, you have a voice. You have a voice. And so I just used my voice at that time. I was just using my voice and spreading a message that I felt like needed to be spreaded at that time. Because there is criticism in some music that, you know, it does down women. Yeah, down and, women, of course, of course. And is that something you, you think needs to change? 
Definitely. If if somebody feels some type of way, that means somebody's doing something wrong. If so, if the, if if we're speaking of a problem and we're speaking about it, that means that clearly there's a problem somewhere. So obviously, I do I do feel like um, sometimes it, they do downvalue and downplay women, but. Sometimes I also feel like some of the artists are not doing it intentionally. Sometimes maybe a conversation needs to be had, you know what I mean? Sometimes I don't feel like the artist is doing it intentionally. Maybe he doesn't know what he's doing or he doesn't know what he's saying sometimes. Sometimes they just go to the studio and just rhyme words. So we do need to be very careful with what we're saying as well as influencers, and that's just probably... I mean, you talk about yourself as an influencer, which is undoubtedly true. Yeah. But there seems to be a lot of pressure, particularly on young black artists, yeah. to speak out about knife crime or gangs. Do you think that pressure is fair? The pressure, the pressure isn't fair. The pressure isn't fair. The pressure isn't fair that everybody feels like somebody has to speak about it. The pressure isn't fair, but what, what needs to be... If you feel some type of way and you feel strongly enough about it to say something about it, then cool, hands up. Everyone's opinion needs to be respected. However, the pressure, I don't think any pressure should be put on anyone to speak out. That's just how I feel. As a, as a young man, yeah. you know, living in London, yeah. it, it, you look at the, the deaths from knife crime, yeah. particularly in, in the capital. It's, it's a depressing fact of life now, yeah, of isn't course. it? Yeah, I lost two mates this year, two of my closest mates within six months that I used to be with every single day. So yeah, it is depressing. It is depressing, but but they never really leave you. They're always with you anyway. So it's also motivating, you know? But it's just something that that's bigger than us. Do you know what I mean? If you're born, in, if you're born where we were born, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than us. Somebody's got to step in and it's going to be someone bigger than us because the issue is bigger than us ourselves. So, yeah. I mean, to lose two friends in such yeah, a short period of months. time. And not just friends, friends, like not associates or people you went to. I went to school with one for five years and then you ring him every morning and the other one too, you ring him every morning and both of them were gone within six months. I mean, how do you make sense of that? There is no sense. There is no explanation. There is no sense. There is no explanation. It's just life, where we're born, where we're from. I mean, this is a huge question for anybody, but I mean, what do you think can be done to stop it? What can be done? have to stand up ourselves I guess at one point it's gonna have to stop because the waste of life is just it's a joke yeah life is very precious very very precious and you mentioned there how it in a sense motivates you yeah in what way you don't want to look back if that's where you've come from <clears throat> if that's where you've come from looking behind you is kind of scary you don't want to look back so you just push yourself to keep moving forward. So then if you keep moving forward, when you look back, it looks further back. You know what I'm saying? So you, the harder you work, the further you get away from it. So you just got to keep working. So by the time you look back, it's so far behind you. When you, when you look back, though, does it frighten you? Yeah, because it's not that far. It needs to get further. Still got work to do. Is that why you work so hard, do you think? Yeah. Probably, yeah. I noticed you said before that, you know, young people should never be held back. Yeah. Why, what did you mean by that? Why do you think that's so important, that, that they should never be held back by their background? Because we see inequality mm. everywhere, don't we? Yeah, but can you explain that? Well, you, you were saying, you know, yeah. in, in an interview that you think, you, you know, one of your messages to young people is don't be held back, mm. you know, dream big yeah, exactly i always say no one will understand your journey better than yourself and that was a piece of advice that was given to me and i think that's probably the best advice that was ever given to me 
because it was given to me also at a stage where, you know, as a teenager, you get your mum telling you she wants you to do this. You get your old man telling you, your, bre your friends are like, yeah, you should do this. Everyone. So you get all these things and in your head sometimes before you go sleep as a teenager, you're like, oh, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to be? Blah, blah, blah. I'm getting older now. You start panicking. But the reality of it is nobody's going to tell you what to do. They will tell you what to do, but it might not be for you. The best thing to always do is to learn yourself. Once you know yourself, it just all unravels. It's a hard thing for young people though, isn't definitely it? Definitely is. Definitely is a hard thing for young people. And the reason why I speak about it is because I know exactly how hard it is because I've been there. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why I always try to spread that message. So if they hear it when they're 16, by the time they're 18, it's easier to find yourself. If you hear it once you're 18, it's better, it's better late than never, so. I mean, you work incredibly hard, that's yeah. clear. But I suppose a lot of young kids would look at you and think you've also been lucky. There's no doubt yeah. you're talented, but yeah. you've also been lucky. Yeah. You know, for those young people who maybe don't yeah. feel I'm, I'm going to be as lucky, yeah. what can they do? There's, you see, luck, it's like talent. Talent can only take you so far, and so can luck. Do you know what I mean? So you need to have, if you want to call it luck, you need to have a balance of both. So you do still need to work your ass off and that, that luck will come. Do you know what I'm saying? If you want to call it luck. You talk about your mum and dad yeah. saying your mum tells you to do this, yeah. your dad tells you to do that. Yeah. What do they think of what you're doing now? Did they ever say, yeah. don't do music, get a proper job? No. No, my parents are, despite being African, they're quite young, relatively young. So I kind of um, had it easy. If I, so to say they're supportive yeah supportive yeah so like I just initially obviously my parents wanted me to go to university etc because academically I've always been doing well and so I was I was thinking and I actually signed up and everything to go and study economics with banking and then um, despite doing well at college in it and um, having such an interest in it it just didn't feel right to go to university so then, yeah, music just... And in terms of, you know, your family, your heritage, your mum is from the Congo, Congo yeah. and your dad's Angolan. Yeah. What, if any, influence has that had on your music, do you Definitely. think? Definitely. Growing up, we used to li my, my parents used to play native music. So, like, the melodies definitely, and the sense of live instruments, I definitely want to work a lot more with live instruments. I think they're really cool, but... Um, Definitely, like, the melodic, the whole melodic feel in the songs is very, very singy. So um, I think that's what, that's definitely had a big, big play in my music. And um, sometimes the way I approach it as well. So tender voice, etc. Yeah. And, you know, the whole Afrobeat yeah, thing yeah. has really taken really, off. Really I mean, taken why off. do you think now particularly? I feel like it's just, um, it's the generation. I feel like the generation just seems like, proud of where they come from so it's just being expressed in everywhere like even in fashion we see that people's clothes is more like you can see a native like there'll be a native print somewhere nowadays whereas before it wasn't as present so i just feel like it's just um it's just london right now is really really buzzing and everyone's mixing and the cultures are just everyone's just so yeah it's just a good time for music it's a good time for afrobeats too and also, I know you mention it a lot. You're proud to be from East London. Yeah, man. I'm an East London boy. Proper geezer. <laughs> no, I'm an East London boy, yeah. and, and what is an East London boy? How has that defined you, do you think? Um, being in East is very, especially where I grew up. I grew up in Cannon Town, you know, it's very, 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 very multicultural. So it's like, for example, that's why in my music sometimes you may hear something that, like sometimes it may, a Jamaican word, a Jamaican slang word, or I might even say a Somalian word. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I've grown up in that environment and all these things and all these different people around me, obviously it helps you build who you are today. So all the things that I've taken in whilst growing up, I've heard, just all gets expressed in the music. and. And it's a very positive look at multiculturalism. Yeah. You know, we know post Brexit, yeah. there's a lot of pressure. You know, exactly. with a lot of people yeah. feeling that multiculturalism isn't a good thing. Yeah, what do you say? Clearly, it is a good thing. Do you know what I'm saying? It brings the people together. You go to a young Bain show, you're going to see a, a 30 plus woman, an 18 year old woman. You'll see a guy from I don't know Africa, Asia. 
it brings people together. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't, we can't ever, we can't, um, we can't downplay the importance of multiculturalism at all, at all. Especially because even it just makes us more clever, you know? Because now I know something about you that I didn't know. So we always have to be learning. Life, life is about learning, so. I don't think, I, I can't see any faults or any wrongs in multiculturalism. Especially, I'm born here, I'm British, I'm a British boy, I was born here. And for me to say I don't see any problem, I don't see why anyone else would have a problem with it. And looking forward, what does the future hold for Young Bane? Uh, bigger and better, hopefully. Just some more music, the tour, kicking off in March. Um, I just dropped my clothing now with Dolce Chef, my um, heartbreaking collection. Um, just more music, more videos, more for everyone to smile about, and just more happiness, man. Yeah. And at 21, yeah. I mean, to, to be so young, yeah. certainly from where I'm sitting, <laughs> and so successful. Yeah, thank you. Is, is that not alarming? Um, I think because I dream big, I dream pretty big, so um, I'm definitely happy definitely happy and every moment is a moment and every moment does I do appreciate every single moment and everyone who's made it possible out there the listeners everyone but I think we've got a lot more work to do to where we want to get to so let's just keep going and your advice to everybody dream big dream big and only you understand your journey no one will understand it better than yourself definitely young Bane thank you very thank much thank you very much for having me thank, thank you, you.